Today, the Biden administration announced a $6 trillion federal budget proposal. One noticeable exclusion from that proposal was the Hyde Amendment. Now, the Hyde Amendment was passed over four decades ago to prohibit the federal funding of abortion. By scrapping the amendment, Biden has opened the door for the government to force taxpayers to fund abortion. Now, liberal activists are calling this a historic step, but this is just another instance of the Biden administration bending to the progressive left agenda. Joining me now, Ali Dostuck, the host of Relatable, and that is a podcast that you can get everywhere. Ali, um, why do you think Biden did this? Because he once supported this. I think he switched his position in 2019. Yes, you're you're exactly right. And I think you already hit the nail on the head when you said that he's bending over uh, for the progressive left. And he is um, going back, unfortunately, on his stance that he held for decades uh, when he said that he uh, supported the Hyde Amendment, that he actually voted um, for a ban on late term abortion twice when he was a senator. And so he's actually been pretty moderate on this issue. I think that's why some pro-lifers voted for him saying, okay, there's no way that he's going to repeal the Hyde Amendment. Maybe he will stand up for unborn life when he's president. But unfortunately, he has done exactly what he promised to do um, in his campaign. And that is to propose the removal of the Hyde Amendment. You know, Ali, is there going to be some buyer's remorse for those pro-lifers that voted for him? I mean, it, he said a lot of things, but he actually said that he was going to do this on the campaign trail. So they should have been aware of this, right? Yes. Now, I think that a lot of people who said that they were pro-life evangelicals for Biden, who said that they were conservative on a lot of issues, but they just didn't like Donald Trump, I think they were probably a lot more liberal than they let on. They were probably trying to get some conservative evangelicals to vote for Biden. And so they pretended that, you know, somehow his policies were going to reduce the number of abortions. But um, at this point, I think it's just unmistakable that he is a pro-abortion president. This is not just a pro-choice administration, the way that maybe you could say the Obama administration was or the Clinton administration was. This is a pro-abortion administration. And the people who voted for him, who say that they're pro-life, are going to have to reckon with that choice at some point. I do hope that there's some buyer's remorse. Um, but, you know, I, I've learned to not be too optimistic when it comes to politics. I only got a few more uh, seconds with you, Allie. I want to get your reaction to these parents that are now being shamed uh, for not vaccinating their, their kids because of, the, of concerns. You're a new mother. How do you, how, how do you, where do you stand on this issue? Look, this is a very personal choice for uh, a lot of people. No one should be shamed. There are a lot of very enthusiastically pro-vaccine parents who simply have questions about whether or not this is necessary for their kids. And so they're kind of taking a wait and see approach. And I think that no one should be shamed for their decision. It's, it's very personal and people are going to make the choice that's best for them and best for their families. You know, the, the fact of the matter is parents, they take care of their kids. This should be between you, the parent, and the medical professionals coming to a decision. But at the end of the day, it's your decision as a parent. And it's just sad that those liberties are leaving this country. Anyway, Allie, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, uh, you Lauren. should check out her podcast. It's great. Thank you so much.